Hi, I'm Alexa Moran, the director of women's ministry here at Grace Church. Today's episode is about suicide. Suicide is a very hard and difficult topic to discuss, but it's one that needs to be discussed. And today's episode is not only about suicide, it's about hope. And I understand that suicide is a very difficult topic. So if today's topic is going to be too much or do more harm than good for you or be a detriment, I encourage you to skip today's episode. But if you are struggling with thoughts of suicide, please reach out to myself or the counselors or our pastors on staff. Also check out our caption section where I'm going to list out a bunch of resources for you as well. And please know that you're not alone and that there are people out there who care about you. We care about you. So please reach out. We would love to get you connected and to help you during this time. And if you think that you know someone who's struggling with thoughts of suicide, please approach them. Be there for them. Encourage them. Show them that you care. So like I said, today's topic is a hard one but it's an important one to discuss. I hope today's episode is a blessing to you. Thank you. Hello, ladies. Welcome to another episode of Women of Grace. I'm here with Deb Smith, and we'll be interviewing her, and it's going to be a great time. So, Deb, why don't you introduce yourself to everyone? Hey, everyone. Hope you're doing well. I'm Deb Smith. I've been attending Grace for 11 years. My husband is Lonnie Smith. We've been married for over 20 years, and we had two daughters. We have a daughter now and three grandkids. And she is a member of the women's leadership team. (laughs) So um, let's get started. I'm really excited to get this interview going. So um, Deb, you and your husband, Lonnie, have walked through a painful season. So can you tell me a little bit about that? I can. A little over two years ago, we lost our son-in-law. And then three months later, our daughter to suicide. Wow. Ted had, it was about a week before Christmas in December of 2017. We were actually going to be visiting them for Christmas. So eight days later, we were really excited. They just moved into a new house a couple of months earlier. We knew that our son, was, son-in-law was finishing the guest room for us. Every call, he was like, oh, I'm so excited for you to see the tile. And you know, you guys really love it. They'd really done the guest suite over and we were going to be the first ones to stay in it. So we were pretty excited. So we get this call. I still remember the day. It was like a blue sky, sunny day in December. And when Lonnie told me, I was just like shocked. I just like couldn't even believe it. We had no, came out of absolute less field. Um, He had been laid off from his dream job about six months earlier. He was working. Um, Erica had started with Amazon in September of that year. She was traveling a lot, and I know that was challenging for them, but we just, this was like completely out of left field. So we got on a plane, we flew to Florida, uh, stayed about three weeks, helped her through all of the arrangements and the funeral and all of that, but then eventually we did have to come home. She was surrounded with a good network of people, so we were comfortable that she was in as good a place as she could be. Right. And we came home, we checked with, in with her regularly. Um, she was diagnosed with PTSD, so she was seeing a counselor. She was on medication, but she eventually came to the point where she didn't want to stay in the house anymore. And she made um, a hard decision to leave Florida and to take a role with Seattle in Amazon, with Amazon in Seattle. So she was going to move to Seattle. Thought that was the best thing for her. Florida had too many memories of their friends and their life. And right. um, like I said, she'd been with Amazon for three months, so it seemed like to her that was going to be a good next step. Mm-hmm. So she sold the house pretty quickly. Um, she sold almost every stick of their belongings. She just really wanted no evidence of their previous life and really just was looking for a fresh start. So she moved to Seattle on March 1st that year. And um, three weeks later, her grief just overcame her. She took a bottle of her prescribed medication. Um, she was on life support for about three days while the doctors did tests to understand what kind of activity her brain did have. She was determined to have no brainstem activity. And so um, about three days later, uh, she was removed from life support. Um, it was just surreal from start to finish. You know, t- first of all, to go through that once with my son-in-law was 
challenging enough. And then for it to have been my daughter and um, 3000 miles away. So we're in Seattle. We have all these, you know, honestly, from a going forward perspective, it was easier because the house had been sold. She was in a, she had a gorgeous apartment, a block from the space needle. Uh, a lot of her stuff was still in boxes. She was working a lot and just kind of just getting settled in. She hadn't even been there that long. So we, um, had a, a brief service and, uh, came home. Thanks for sharing that. I must've been, I can't even imagine how difficult that must've been to, to go through. <laughs> um, but you did something important in that operating room that night. What, what was it? Um, we'd made the decision to donate her organs and her tissues and whatever could benefit someone else. And so, um, that night about, you know, we had to make arrangements, you know, obviously to get the operating room because what needed to happen was that a whole team of doctors for every possible different recipient, there was a team of doctors in an operating room waiting. So, um, we, she was removed from life support, took about 10 minutes. And then the doctors needed to step in and do it, you know, the next thing. And so I just, I cried my eyes out and I just prayed, God, help me do this right. And I rebuked the devourer for taking this story. You know, we know this came through God's hands. And so because it came through his hands, we knew that we could face it. But right there that night, I just said, I rebuke you, Satan. This is God's story. And we're going to walk this out. You know, looking back on their lives, they had pretty much everything the world could offer. You know, they were, they're both in their 30s. They've been married for six years. They were together for 11. They're both highly educated. My daughter had two master's degrees. My son-in-law was a semester from finishing his second. <clears throat> They had good jobs. They had a four-bedroom house with a pool in Coral Springs, Florida, which, as we know now, is just outside of um, um, the, that town where the, uh, well, the shootings happened in Florida. That Coral Springs is the next town. Mm -hmm. And they took great vacations. They had a, a full life of friends. In fact, the, the Saturday before Ted died, um, they'd been out with friends, that, you know, their, their social media posts and everything. They, to all... Even the people close to them appear to really just have it really going on. So it was just, I think, that much more of a shock to their community of friends and to the people around them that people were just devastated. And, th and that was even, I think, in a lot of ways, that made it even harder at times. I can imagine it. It, came, it feels like it doesn't make any sense that it just came out of nowhere because it looks like everything's perfect, but reality is was hard and that's awful um what has been the biggest obstacle to trusting god during that time or this time because it's an everyday process a couple of things come to mind so you know we know satan is looking to steal kill and destroy so mm -hmm. though we know that rationally there's the part of walking through that and choosing to trust god and so the hardest thing one of the hardest things for me was the voices in your head of shoulda, coulda, woulda. Yeah. Um, even though there was nothing, nobody could have seen this coming. This was, you know, we we had done, we left her in God's hands. You know, we did everything we knew to do. And as I said, understanding that this came through God's hands. We know that God doesn't allow things that are beyond us. So if this was allowed, then this must be within our capacity to go through it. And looking at it now, I really do believe that God knew that he could trust us with this story because we've chosen to walk in a way that shows our commitment and our trust and our intention to um, redeem the story for somebody else. Um, suicide touches the church. It touches believers. Um, you look at great heroes in the Bible, like David and Elijah, you know, these are great leaders in the Bible who despaired of their own lives themselves. So in some ways, I think thoughts of despair are not uncommon to the human condition. Mm -hmm. So continuing to walk in a way that 
I call out every day. I trust God. I trust you. I speak it out loud. I'm a real big proponent of speaking out scripture of um, just in, when things come against me, I just say, God, I trust you. I trust you with this story. I trust you with today. And to just really walk it out a day at a time. You know, when, when this happened, I wanted healing to be all at once. I would just, just heal me and I want to move on. But it's not like that. You know, God gives us healing progressively and a moment at a time, a day at a time, an hour at a time. And so learning to walk in trust in that way is how we do get healed and how we are being healed every day. It's very true. I, there was something you said about that he trusted you with this story. And I really like how you worded that because this story is, it's very difficult. And the fact that you can look at it as God trusting you to tell his story through this pain, through this, this anguish that you and your husband must have felt and still feel to this day, that I really like how you worded that and that he brought in David and, and Elijah and Elijah and all of them because like they had anguish and, and despair and it's true it's part of the human experience but I like how you worded that you said it was God trusting you with this story like God has faith in you to carry this story to fruition for his glory and that is a beautiful way to look at it so thank you for for sharing that because it's true he's trusting you with this for his testimony for his glory and I think you're doing a very good job doing that so you know I think I think we as humans we I mean, you read scripture in, mm -hmm. in so many lives. The struggle was the story. Yeah. And we as humans, we hate that. We don't want to struggle. We don't want to fight. And let's face it, our, our walk with God is a fight. You know, mm -hmm. Ephesians says, get ready for battle because you're, you're, you know, the Satan's going to take you to try to take you down. I mean, there's a whole section about the full armor of God. Like it's not a, it's not a walk in the park. It's not, it's, it's a battle. It's a stroll through a battlefield every day. To just keep fighting. I, what I especially hard. like about Ephesians six is um, something I just learned recently, and I think actually I think I learned it through this process was that we've always understood the shield of this, the sword of the spirit to be an offensive weapon. Mm -hmm. The Holy Spirit is our sword, you know, the sword of the spirit. But I heard some teaching about a year ago that also, if you look at the armor that Roman soldiers wore. Yeah, they had a big, heavy sword that weigh, was really heavy. They had to be strong to wield those. Mm -hmm. But they also carried us what was more of a dagger. And they used the dagger to dig out the arrows that got around their shield. So oh, when you wow. look at the fiery darts of the enemy, that is, again, that's a defensive weapon. It's not offensive. It's like, hey, Satan's coming for you. What are you going to use to, to you know, counteract those lies? I like that analogy that the dagger was used to pull out the arrows of the enemy because that's true like we're going to get hit with the enemy and the the word of the bible the word of god is how we combat that how we pull out those arrows that make it through our defenses that's how we pull it out we pull it out with with his word by spending time with him by trusting him by turning over those areas of our lives to him that's a really good analogy. Thank you for sharing that. I didn't know that. I didn't know they used daggers. I just learned that recently. And, and again, I've read that. I've just been one of my fav favorite passages my whole life. Um, it's from a teaching called the war in your, in the war in your head. If you Google it, you can find it. It's good stuff. Oh, that's, that's a Google search that's happening after this. <laughs> oh, thank you for sharing. That's a good one. Um, so sorry. So, um, so how are you, um, how are you doing that with your, with your story, trusting him, moving on? What have you learned about God as he's leading you through this, this process, this, the, his story that he has given you? So I think the way that I have learned to walk this out is by um, being intentional about being grateful. Mm -hmm. I can look at this as I lost a whole branch of my family tree, or I can look at this as, you know what? God is using this story and, and our, our stories are almost always about somebody else. The comfort that we get is usually to comfort to give later. Oh, so as true. we look at this, the story becomes, you know, how are we going to use this? You know, what can we do? But it, to me, it starts with intentionally being thankful to be grateful for every day, to be grateful for small things. And I've really seen God be faithful in 
you know, kind of like Courtney talked about last week, and I, I chuckle because it's the same passage. It's First Thessalonians 5, 16 through 18, where the, God says, give thanks in everything. And so that was real key to us in this process is we were going to, we are going to give thanks for this if it kills us because God had said, be thankful. So out of obedience, we said, God, we thank you for this. We don't know what you're going to do with it, but we think, you know, you've asked us to give thanks and that's kind of how it started. You've asked us to give thanks for this. And so we are. So that has been really key. The other thing again is to speaking out scripture, to really be mindful of my scripture, to to really guard my mind against the attacks of Satan, to not let those shoulda, coulda, wouldas um, live too long in my thoughts. Um, <clears throat> worship music is another favorite of mine. Um, Lonnie and I both love music and we are known to have the worship music just blasting and some songs just over and over and over again. And I, I never get tired of just um, turning on, you know, whatever new worship songs are coming in. And, and I'm just really thankful the quality of the worship music that we have access to, um, mm -hmm. I find that that really helps as well. So if you don't mind me asking, during that time, was there a specific uh, worship song that you played on repeat or a specific scripture that you spoke out or both? I would love both, actually. <laughs> yeah. So again, the, the passage in, the, in uh, Thessalonians, absolutely give thanks in all things for this is the will of God concerning you. Mm -hmm. um, Romans 12 two, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And so renewing my mind is something I did hourly, daily, you know, whenever the, the negative thoughts come, you just, you know, no, I'm not taking that thought. I'm going to take this thought captive and that I'm a child of God and God's redeeming the story. Um, playlist was a couple of favorites of mine are um, Bethel Music, Raise a Hallelujah. Oh, I love um, that one. Jen Johnson, Ain't No Grave. Mm. Um, there's a new one called Elevation from Elevation called Rattle, and Ooh. it's about the dry bones and how, you know, the, the dry bones are going to sing. That's a great one. Um, there's a new one from Elevation called The Blessing. So good stuff. So then my next question is, how do you stay thankful, especially during that time, even now when you remember it? How do you how do you stay thankful to God? Well, I think you have to differentiate between feeling thankful and being thankful. Mm, because that. let's face it our flesh doesn't want to feel thankful mm, but right. um out of obedience to god we are thankful we are grateful because candidly the, the the weight of my sin was carried on the cross so as i look at this i will carry this story for jesus out of what he did for me it's a, a beautiful picture to paint like he carried the cross for us so we can carry the story he has given us if he could do that for us, then why can't we do that for him? That's, I like that image. That's a beautiful image. Mm -hmm. um, so what growth are you seeing in yourself in this season? I think my faith is stronger than ever. And I think that's, as, as we know, that when we walk through hard times, it strengthens, you know, you know we, if we choose to walk the path and to accept what comes and to be brave and to trust, and to give and to love, God redeems the story. And he redeems it kind of like with healing. You know, we want our healing all at once. We want redemption all at once as well. And I think what I'm coming to understand is that I will continue to be surprised and pleased and blessed by what comes out of this story. Well, thank you for sharing that. Do you um, have any final words, advice? Uh, I would say that I would say that in going through this, I was truly unaware of how suicide touches everyone. Mm. Um, we're active now with an organization called the American Foundation for Suicide Prevention, and um, they have these events that are like walks, and when you look at the categories of, you know, family member, sibling, survivor, you know, having attempted a community member. So, you know, I think nationally, and if you remember in 2018, um, uh, Anthony Bourdain, mm, yes. it was just like one, remember that, that period, this was that spring. It was yeah. like one after another, after another, or it was in March. I think Anthony Bourdain was later on. Kate Spade was like not long after that. I oh, thought, I remember I Kate Spade. Mm-hmm. I think um, in our culture and even in the church, 
it's possible for us to be unaware of the level of pain that people are carrying. Mm -hmm. So I guess that would be my, my words to everyone is to don't assume that what the face is saying is what's going on inside. It's true. It's true. People can hide what they're, the struggle that they're enduring. And I think as sisters in Christ that we should try to reach out to everyone to try to connect to them to give them a support system and to let them know that they're not alone in their, in their, in their suffering. Cause we're all here for you. We're praying for you. And if there's anything we can do, we would love to. And I think that's what we need to remind ourselves to look out for each other. Cause that's. Yeah. And kind of, like I said, you know, the struggle's part of the story. Mm-hmm. So if people are struggling. You know, we all want to, we want, we all want to, we want off that table, you know, yeah. I want to just, you know, I don't want to walk out of this, but sometimes it's just not part of the t- God's timing for us. And so if we yield to his will in our life, if we yield to his timing, and if we trust him, when he says that I, I'm not going to give you more than you can carry, then by definition, I will, I will choose to walk through this. Yeah. He, like that. He'll never give us more than what we can carry. We just have, he has a lot of faith in us. We just have to put our faith in him. <laughs> Well, thank you, Deb, so much for sharing. Um, the story is, I think, will help a lot of women, a lot of people, not just women, because like you said, there's so many people that have been touched by suicide in one way or another. And I think this will hopefully connect with them, raise awareness, get us to realize um, what we can do. And I just really, I just really thank you for this. Thank you for sharing it. It is my great pleasure. Thanks. Well, ladies, I think that's the end of this episode. So thank you for joining us and we'll see you again next time. Bye.